what are the best settings for this monitor? And by best settings, I mean the settings which I adopted in my review. They allowed me to meet the colour emitter targets, which I usually go for in my reviews, and they suited my own preferences. Beware that individual units and preferences vary, so these settings will not be optimal for all users or in all cases. The first thing to consider is the preset used by the monitor. There are two sets of presets. There are game modes, and in the professional section of the menu, there are pro modes. So if I go to pro mode, for example, and I select eco, you might think you've got user selected if you look at the game options, but it's actually just the last thing you've selected which applies. But I would recommend sticking to user, which gives you the full flexibility. If you select eco, that could work as well, but it maps the brightness differently. The lowest brightness and highest brightness is the same, but everything between that, it will tend towards a lower brightness level. But it'll make a bit more sense if you refer to the contrast and brightness section of the review, by the way. For a lot of these other presets, they apply additional filters and they change things which upset the image in various ways. There are some exceptions. So in pro mode, you might want to use one of the color space emulation settings, for example, sRGB, which emulates the sRGB color space. It clamps the gamut close to sRGB. There's also an Adobe RGB emulation setting and a display P3 or DCI P3 display emulation setting. Just be aware that when you're using these settings, you can adjust the brightness, but you can't adjust the color temperature. So you can't adjust the color channels. On my unit, things weren't too bad in this respect, but they were a little bit on the warm side, warmer than I'd like. If you select one of the other presets, such as user, which I'm using here, then that will use the full native gamut of the monitor. And that will give you the full vibrancy and saturation potential. And that's what I like to test in my reviews. So that's what I'm gonna settle for. But I also like to test emulation modes and I do that separately. The other thing right at the bottom of the gaming menu, there's adaptive sync. You want to have that set to on if you want to use VRR, variable refresh rate technologies on the monitor, or specifically adaptive sync, which will let you use AMD FreeSync or G-Sync compatible. Beware that if you want to use MPRT, which is the strobe backlight setting also explored in the review, you would need to disable adaptive sync. I also like to set response time to fast. I explore this again in more detail in the review, but fast I consider optimal, and certainly for high refresh rates, such as 180 Hertz, which I'm running at at the moment. Brightness, I set this to 24, which got close to my usual target of around 160 nits, which I go for in my reviews. I keep that there for consistency and it suits my lighting environment, but please adjust this according to your own preferences and lighting environment. I set color temperature to customization and I made a few adjustments here. So red, I kept at 50, green, I kept at 50, but blue, I reduced to 42. Just a few quick notes on the color channel adjustments. The adjustments are very sensitive and not quite as precise as I'd like to see. I achieved 6434K as the white point for my test settings, and if I increased the blue channel by another unit to try to come closer to 6500K, it would overshoot 6500K and come closer to 6600K. Though 6434K, which I settled on, is certainly close enough to the target for the purposes of the review and for general usage of the monitor. Calibration and profiling of the monitor further tightens such things up if required. Another thing I observed is when I was using the default settings under user or eco, which uses the normal setting for color temperature, the white point sits around 6700K. If you switch the color temperature to customization and you leave all of the channels at their default neutral position of 50, it sits around 8200K. If you select one of the color space emulation settings from pro mode, so sRGB, Adobe RGB or display P3, and then return to user or eco, the white point sits around 6000K rather than 6700K using the normal setting and around 7,000K rather than 8,200K using the customization setting with neutral channels. If the monitor loses a signal, so if it goes into standby and resumes, or you turn the monitor off then on again, it returns to displaying around 6,700K with the normal setting and 8,200K with the customization setting. The temporary color temperature shift can be annoying if, as I do, you frequently shift between the color space emulation settings and the other presets. Usually with MSI models, the white point using the user or eco and the color space emulation settings is similar, whereas with my MAG274 QRF QDE2, there was a marked difference as the emulation settings were significantly warmer. Perhaps other units would have the more uniform color temperature calibration amongst settings that you'd usually see, and if that were the case, it would nullify this behavior entirely, even if this behavior happens to occur on all units, rather than just being a bug on my unit. So to recap, I selected user for game mode, or you can select it in professional, it doesn't matter. I enabled adaptive sync, 
set brightness to 24, and I made a few adjustments to color temperature customize, I reduced the blue channel to 42. And that's all I changed, everything else was left at default. Switching over to HDR now. I'm on Shadow of the Tomb Raider, running the game under HDR. It's just a little bit more interesting to look at than the desktop. So you can change the game mode, or the professional mode, the pro mode. Most of these don't actually affect the image in any way under HDR though. Some of them apply additional sharpness filters, FPS being the strongest there, and this is separate to the sharpness control, which you can also adjust by the way. And if you want a super oversaturated representation, which does crush your shade variety and makes things look really cartoonish and bizarre, you could select premium color. That has a similar effect under SDR, incidentally. If you want a highly oversaturated representation and you don't mind crushing shade variety, or perhaps you want to do this for a competitive edge, then you can select the premium color setting. But I would again recommend sticking to user for a more balanced look to things. You don't have control over your brightness setting under HDR, and you can't adjust the color channels. So everything else here, I just left at default. I simply selected user for HDR, which I feel is the best balanced, and I'm not saying it's particularly well balanced. I do explore this in the review. HDR is really not a big selling point of this monitor. So if you happen to prefer how it looks with another setting, then do feel free to use that. Just a few final settings to go through, perhaps using the monitor in the evening or another time where you want to have a little bit more of a restful look to things, a bit more of a relaxing, warm tint to the image. There's an anti-blue mode, or you can just select the low blue light toggle. So anti-blue will select low blue light for you and make a few other adjustments, but the effect is very much the same. This gives a warm and somewhat green tint to the image. If you don't want the green aspect, you want a more balanced look, which I find my eyes adjust to more readily then don't activate the low blue light setting. Instead, change the color temperature to warm. And that is a highly effective low blue light setting. It gives a warm, slightly amber tint to the image without the kind of green push. And I find it is better balanced visually. The final setting I'd like to go through, that is night vision, and that's found in the gaming section. This is a visibility enhancement it's set to off by default or in the user setting it is anyway. If you set this to normal, it gives a decent uplift to darker shades and medium dark shades, but it's quite selective so it doesn't affect brighter shades. Although it does appear to affect the black point a bit as well. If you select strong it goes for a more pronounced effect and it lifts your black point up further so you do lose contrast when you use this setting. It could have been more selective, I prefer it when they don't touch the depth of pure black and they don't affect the contrast, but if you want it as a visibility enhancement, it certainly does work effectively. You can't see exactly what things look like to the eye in the video, but the visibility of all of these squares is good now. But you could have it set to strongest, which gives it an even stronger effect, or AI, which gives a potentially stronger effect. What it does is it looks at the image and, and it's supposed to make adjustments based on that. Although on this particular example, actually strongest in AI, it's pretty similar for the visibility of these dark squares. It's just that AI seems to lift the black point up even more. So it gives a rather flooded look to things. It really minimizes your contrast. My preference is to maximize contrast, have this set to off and just go with a more as intended look to things. But if you wanna improve visibility in dark regions, for example, for spotting enemies more easily, then that's what the night vision setting can achieve.